The infinite monkey theorem states that due to the nature of infinity, a monkey hitting keys at random on a typewriter keyboard will almost surely eventually type out the collected works of William Shakespeare. I suppose there is an aspect of random to language, but what's fascinating to me is the emotion and emphasis you can apply to those words to make them jump off the page and mean something. At the end of the day, it truly is how you say it. The words have the ability to heal, to hurt, to uplift, to nurture, and even to save. Anyone can string words together, but it's how they are uttered that can make all the difference. That concept is what we will explore tonight. And with that, enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Strangers in the street meet. One boy starts with yo. Yes, says the other. Not so sure. So the first tries, hey. Who? You. Me? The story of you and the story of me. It's a story of life on any street happening tremendously right in this minute. Yo, yes, by Chris Washburn.
changed. Pretty soon you can go on ice fishing with me. You with a warm and sensible yet stylish outfit, furry boots, and your own fishing pole. It could happen, you know. Right. So speaking of things that could happen, we need to talk about. Is this about Valentine's Day? What do you want to be about this? Well, I want to be cheap boxes, um, poetry, assorted chocolates, and box stamped roses with thorns on them. You know, symbolizing strawberries and all that. Roses with thorns? Damn it, man, why do you have to get into every little jab you can? I was just trying to be sincere about this Walmart holiday, but so much expectation into it. Wow, you take everything I say literally, and I just don't get it. In fact, I can't joke at all anymore because how do you react? You know, this is supposed to be a special evening. We're celebrating your six months. Yep, six months. Feels like forever. And it doesn't feel like forever to me, too? Does everything have to be a competition? Fine, then, fine. You win, Annie, you win. Hands down, it's been harder for you. That's the thing, though. I don't want to win. Not this time. Look, it's been hard, but truthfully, I can't imagine what it's been like for you. Alcohol is how you cope with your pain, with your stress, with your happiness, even with your boredom. And now, you have to feel things again. It must be overwhelming. Yeah, it has been. I mean, it is. So my sponsor had I told you about it. He told me that when I started drinking heavily, I stopped growing emotionally for some shit like that. Anyway, all I can think now when I look in the mirror is I'm 17. I'm emotionally 17. It sounds crazy, but it doesn't feel crazy, truly. I'm feeling things that I don't even know what the name. Like, I need to come up with new names for the crayons in my box or something. <laughs> that's deep. The crayon analogy, I mean. Yeah, I suppose, right? That is right, though. You know? He knows what he's talking about. But not an emotional record? What I'm saying is we've been together for two years, <laughs> and I've been in love with you for ten. Since the first day of the next day. I would still be here if I thought you couldn't make it through this. And Ed, he sees that fight in you too. You even said yourself that he only takes on sponsors who truly believes in you. Right. Honestly, it's been helpful for you, for both of us. And I have to I'm not trying to throw anything in your face, John, when I talk about roses with thorns. It's just the truth. I, I guess I have to remember that those thorns exist. And look who's using analogies now. I know he has to remember the thorns. I have to as well. Otherwise, I'm fooling myself. This is a day-by-day -day battle, and I can't let my guard down. I get that. And I guess the only thing I don't get is why you decided to say. People aren't disposable. You're an alcoholic, and I fell in love with someone who I didn't know that had that problem. And I question myself up and down about that, too. Believe me, I took too many psychology classes in college not to analyze myself and what I do. Still, it comes back to that truth. I don't want to throw anything or anything in. Is that what you move to get stuff in every coasters and every car you left down? Johnny, you know what I mean. Please hear me. I need you to. I, I'm not choosing to throw this away. Us away. Yeah, I guess I feel like I deserve it to go in the I do. What I know is, I couldn't have gotten this far without you. That's just it! You can't keep repeating pinning the recovery on me! That's what's stressing me out! Because what if I had left instead? What if I had said, fuck it, let him throw it out himself? What if I just left? Would you have still gotten any treatment? What would have, what would have happened? Would you have... And? Johnny, I... I tried to talk to you about this earlier when you first sat down. My mom called me honestly. And I can't get the conversation out of my head. She said... She said I should leave. She said I'm unhappy and in denial. And I really don't think I am, but... Isn't that the definition of denial? I don't know. She told me I'm making excuses for you. That I'm justifying your behavior. Like she's some sort of doctor filled with Uber. But...
oh, John, you know, no, I can't do this. My mom, she, she, she said I should just walk away and save my heart. She said you'll never provide a normal life for me. I guess. I took over about two months ago. 
about. Look, Claire, it's just been so gradual, and I don't know how to tell you. I, I don't know how to tell you. That's all you have to say? Libby, I deserve, even if I lived in Australia, we were like a whole day apart. <laughs> I hear that's a lot of vegetarians in Australia. You are not going to make me cry. I'm mad at you. Seriously, I'm seriously pissed. Liv, you've got to talk to me, even if you don't know how. Promise? Fine, I promise. You know, the worst side, I would have been able to judge your sincerity, but your face is a promise. Thank you. Honestly, it's been rough, Claire. Dad seemed like his old self some days, but then he also looks so faithful to me. I was over the other night for dinner, and we sat down to watch TV, and he got so irritated with the coat, he threw it at the TV screen. He just couldn't figure it out. He was fumbling with the buttons, and I don't think, I think he knew what he wanted to do, but he just couldn't work it. It was sad, you know? I miss mom so much. It's like I can't breathe when I let myself think of it. Really think of it. I know, exactly. Especially, me too. Do you think that dad would be like this if mom were still alive? I don't know. Maybe not. But you can't think like that. It's like asking an impossible question. It does no good. Well, Mom would have kept his brain alive. I know it. Remember my friend from high school, Dennis? Yeah, the Dennis who killed himself? Yeah, I went to the funeral, and his mom, do you like remember his mom? She was so amazing. He was like overnight she her son. And then her little hold on to his life. It just disappeared. We walked up to the casket, and she told me to talk to him. It was the weirdest experience. She told me it was an accident, that she that he'd been murdered. She just did not accept the fact that he took his own life, and she lost it. Absolutely lost her grip. I hear you. I just have to take you out of your head off. You always were the one to to pretend the dreamer in the family. At least that's what mom used to say. She said what? Is put into another's body 
those memories, preferences, and behaviors are transmitted to All the goals your daughter had, the future that she imagined, and the way she's always wanted, the colleges she's planning to apply to, it's like I can sense those things with my own body now. Like she's whispering in my ear. All I can say is that I will do all I can to live to live for the book for us. I will graduate in two years, which is a bit later than I class, but that's because of all the school I missed from being sick. I have a genetic condition that is quite rare, and I would have died without a transplant. I was put on the list when I was in school, but my symptoms rapidly progressed a year ago. That's when my name moved to the top. And it all happened just in time. The doctors say I'm healing well, and there's no sign of rejection. I don't need you to know that. Time is a strange thing, but I believe that everything happens for a reason. I don't know if you are religious or spiritual or nothing at all, but I know without any hesitation that your daughter and I were meant to be linked. I know things about her that I can't explain. And I don't want you to freak out, but I want to share with you because it may bring you comfort. I can only assume it's, it's so your memory, like I said before, because that is the only way I can make sense of what I've been experiencing since the transplant. For example, your daughter must have loved music, because I suddenly have an interest in all types of music, which I was never moved by before. A song will come on the radio, and before I know it, I'm crying because I feel the emotion behind it, even the instrumental songs. Also, I have an unexplained love of citrus fruit now. At first, I thought it was a vitamin D deficiency, like a side effect of my anti-rejection meds. But I can actually eat a lemon, like an apple. It's really strange, but I know that it has to be a daughter who loves sour fruit. Carla, would you come here for a second? You got to hear this. Thank 
Space Station LZ-35. This is your administrator, Jamie. I'm here to address some rumors floating about the station. Although, I hate to say it, the station is being shut down due to concerns of the recent terrorist activity against the Foundation. I've been told the main concern is the station being pulled into the earth because of said terrorist activity. Now, this doesn't mean you'll lose your job. <coughs> As of now, that all employees are going to work disassembling the whole station until the end of the year. When we reach the end of the year, all workers will transfer to our station and the to the military that will destroy the Soto de Great Station or home for the past 45 years. Enjoy your days and goodbye. This takes place at the breakfast house called Bradley's Breakfast House. I give her a quick snack. I try and enjoy orange juice cup. I'm feeling a bit cramped in the shell. Bradley picks up the egg cart. Whoa, where are we going? Bradley says eggs now. I think we're taking a trip to Eggland. Bradley opens the up the cart and pulls out the egg cart. I've been waiting this moment for a lifetime now. Bradley cracks open the egg cart and he begins to sizzle. Yes. When am I going to strip? Bradley pulls out the pack of bacon. About time. Bradley pulls out, takes out bacon's hand. Ladies and gentlemen, take a seat. This is going to be a show. Bradley puts bacon's hand on the pan and begins to fry him. Sizzle, baby. <laughs> I need a tan. Bradley starts to take out a pack of hash browns. Hallelujah. Bradley takes out hash browns and him, putting him on the pan. Bradley preheats the 
oven. Turn it up! Grab the puts the pan in the oven. Whoa, baby. Grab the pulls out one juicy cup. I need a shake. Grab the begins shaking one juicy cup. Now I need a glass. Grab the begins pouring one juicy cup in a glass. Well, this is cozy. Grab the begins putting everyone on the plate. You guys like my table? Pretty hot, isn't it? Brenda takes the plate of food out of the out to the customers as they now. Wow, she has pretty hair. My tan is better though. This is so good. I can't wait to eat it. She said what?
two days before. Why don't you just leave me? All I ever do is hurt you. I can't leave you. You're my world. I have to do what's best for me. So what are you saying? I think we should break up. Lily bows her head as she starts to walk away crying. Ali chases after her. Lily shoots her head as if she's saying yes. Lily goes home in a very depressed state and takes out a coloring book. Her, her phone rings is a text from Allie. Allie's text.
The power of words. The concept that affects every day of our lives. From the moods we just put us in, to a song we hold dear to us because of events of our past. That movie that makes you cry, that comedian that has you rolling in laughter, or that song that has everything inside you breaking down and tearing at the seams. Thanks for visiting Metro Theater, or as we like to call it, Theater Therapy. Where the power of words becomes also apparent by the tears shed, the laughs we've had, and the moments we cherish most. I recall an old saying that we used to hear our teachers say in middle school. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt me. Or at least, that's what they told us. In recent years, I've discovered a revised version of this old saying that hits a little closer to the truth. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words just might kill me. Now you can take this in the metaphorical sense of the term, meaning the heart rate that sends us through, or the way we meet horrible and nasty remarks that we get from our peers can break us down on the inside and completely destroy who we are. If we let it. Or you can take it in the literal sense of the term. It's a story we've all seen on the news way too often. The wrong words of the wrong person becomes the next story on the news of some poor innocent guy who gets shot up on the street. You see, words can be the building blocks of our souls or the wrecking ball of our hearts. Which will you choose to use your words for?
Louisiana vacation, and they're like, oh, can we help? Can we help? Can we be involved? So they joined this pre-show to give the kids a few words of advice about how do you stay calm, what's the best thing to do. So um, again, we appreciate you guys. Good job, Frank. 